What is a music interval? A music interval is the distance between two notes. And what are musical notes? How do you measure the distance among them? By the combination of whole steps and half steps. And how do you measure that? Oh, let's talk about that. It could be described as a sound unity made up of these following features, each of them answering a specific question. Fundamental frequency or pitch, how high, partials, what is timber-like, duration, how long, articulation, how is the attack sustained decay, expression, how does it feel, dynamic, how loud, note name, how to spell. If I told you to imitate this sound, you would probably focus on matching the fundamental frequency with your voice, but if I told you to imitate this sound instead, you would probably focus on matching the articulation and partials rather than the pitch. The remaining ones might be ambiguous and change according to context, so we'll ignore them by now. To measure music intervals, we'll focus separately mainly on these two features, fundamental frequency and note name. Part 1. The distance between two fundamental frequencies. There are two ways to measure the distance among fundamental frequencies mathematically and by ear training. The human hearing range goes from 20 up to 20,000 Hz, so any fundamental frequency in between that lasts at least around 40 milliseconds will recognize it as a pitch. If you struggle dealing with numbers, let's put it this way. You want to cook rice and you read a recipe which says add two cups of rice and four cups of water. You could make two completely different conclusions of this. The water quantity must double the rice quantity or the water quantity is the rice quantity plus two cups. In this specific case, both statements will lead you to the same result, but if you changed the rice quantity, then both statements would lead you to different results. The same happens when comparing fundamental frequencies, or you keep the ratio constant throughout the hearing range, or you keep the beat frequency constant, but you cannot keep them both. Most musicians, when talking about intervals, are referring to the ratio between two fundamental frequencies, while the second statement matches with the concept of beat frequency. Both are important regarding different matters, but let's concentrate on the first one. Part 2. The ratio between two fundamental frequencies. Before going deeper into this, we need to know some things about the diatonic scale, which is the common scale we all know. So, why do we call this pitch A and this a as well? I mean, what do they have in common? Two fundamental frequencies share note names when they are in a power of two relation. So throughout the whole human hearing range, we have many pitches we call A. How many exactly? Let's say we call 440 Hz A. Then we can divide by two as many times needed to get close to 20 Hz, and on the other hand, multiply by two as many times needed to get close to 20,000 Hz. Then, for this definition of the A note, there are 10 pitches available in the hearing range, so all these A notes share this definition. Every so-called simple interval, which means in an octave range, can be expressed as a ratio from one perfect unison up to two perfect octave, and any number bigger than two will be called compound interval. Intervals can be measured melodically, which means the trajectory of a single line during a given time, and harmonically, which means two lines simultaneously. But what is the ratio by which we identify a perfect fifth, for example? There are different answers. Part 3. Pure intervals and tempered intervals. There are two kinds of intervals. Pure intervals, the ratios can be expressed as fractions, Nowadays, the only one that remains in our standard tuning system is the octave or unison. And tempered intervals, whose ratios are irrational numbers. For example, the tempered triton is expressed as a ratio of square root of 2 over 1. The 12 tone equal temperament, our standard western scale, has only two pure intervals, unison and octave, as I told you before, and 11 tempered intervals which come from multiplying one single ratio over and over again, which is the 12th root of 2, and is called the tempered semitone. Sense is a unity that arises from this 12 tone equal temperament and means 2 to the power of 1 over 1200. So if you take this to the power of, let's say, 100, you get the interval called tempered semitone, which is the smallest interval in instruments like piano. 
Previously we said intervals can be measured by ear training, but this works only with pure intervals. Our human ear makes us easy to measure simple ratios and like tempered ratios. If you think it's difficult to tune your guitar by ear, I mean, don't worry, it's technically impossible. You need a tuner to get actually close to this tempered ratios because your ear will prefer simple ratios instead. Part 4. What inversion of intervals means. There are three possibilities from a given pitch in the one that follows. Both pitches share the same fundamental frequency. The second pitch is higher than the first one. And the second pitch is lower than the first one. This means that melodic intervals can be either unison, ascendant or descendant. It's the same when you stack notes vertically. In many books it is said that intervals can be inverted. Regarding numbers, this means if you take one ratio, for example 3 over 2, then its inversion will be the ratio by which multiplying 3 over 2 you get 2, which is the octave. This works with both pure intervals and tempered intervals. It is said that the tritone is an interval whose inversion is the same ratio. We must not take for granted the fact that this works only in the 12-tone equal temperament, and it's unique. There is no other ratio that mathematically allows this. Part 5. Distance between note names. We already talked about measuring intervals among fundamental frequencies and the different kinds of possible ratios. Now, how do we identify them in staff notation? There are always five main staff lines. You may add some extra lines if needed, so the note head can be in any line or space between lines or adjacent to it. These lines and spaces do not have fixed note names linked to them, but change according to clefs. So the second space can be either A4 or C3 or B3 according to different clefs. Now there's a concept which is the essence of this staff notation system and is called key signature. There are seven note names from A to G. If we write down a sequence of only those names but starting from C, we get this which is called the C major scale and it's the basis of Western music theory. Now you might be wondering why you see a 12 key pattern repeated all over the 88 keys of piano. That's because piano and tempered instruments are made to match a specific set of pitches, simple intervals called the 12 notes of the chromatic scale, which are all separated in a so-called half-step interval. If we analyze the C major scale in terms of half-steps, we get this. So how do we indicate some pitch out of the 7 but contained in the chromatic 12-note scale? To do that, we need the concept of accidental. There are three main kinds of accidentals called natural, sharp and flat. Sharp means half-step higher and flat means half-step lower from natural. In the C major scale all notes are natural, then if you see any clef alone, that means it's in the key of C major, or any sequence of consecutive note names in which all accidentals are natural. If you write seven consecutive note names starting from D, we get this which is called the Dorian mode, and if you want this to be a D major scale instead, then you need the F and C note to be a half step higher to keep the sequence of half steps that defines the major scale. So the sharp accidental is added to them both. Any interval among the seven notes of the key signature is called diatonic interval, and any interval with a pitch out of these seven is called chromatic interval. Summarizing, there are note names and accidentals, and any possible combination among them has a specific name. For a single half steps quantity, there are many different ways to combine note names and accidentals, and for some people this might be very confusing. Pay attention to these two ways of writing the same four half steps distance. The first one is called a major third, and the second one is called a diminished fourth. Most people will argue the first one is the right way and the second one is unnecessary complicate. I disagree with them. Both are right in its right context. That sounds ridiculous. I mean, why would you call that a diminished fourth instead of a major third? Part 6. Ridiculous intervals makes you get everything. Try to keep these three things independent from each other. Note name, accidental and pitch. If you can do this, then you will be able to guess how to call any interval.
So there are seven note names plus one, which is the octave of any of them. From C to C could be unison or octave, from C to D is second, and so on so forth up to the seventh. Then take into account accidentals to know how many half steps are in between both notes. So if you go from C natural to D natural, that is called a major second, but if you go from C natural to D flat, that is called a minor second. But what happens if you go from C natural to C sharp? Then that is called an augmented unison. That's nonsense. The word unison means one single sound. Spell that note D flat instead. But what if you want to move two consecutive ascending half steps from C? Then either you call C sharp or D flat the note in between, you cannot avoid having a melodic augmented unison interval. Less common accidentals are double sharp and double flat. Don't think they're useless. In certain contexts, to keep the consecutive sequence of note names, they are needed. For example, if you are in the key of G sharp minor and you want to go from 7th degree to 1st degree, in a minor second interval, you will have to write it like this. F double sharp moving up to G sharp. Most common intervals are called major, minor and perfect, and other less common are augmented and diminished. As there are many ways to call the same pitch or fundamental frequency, there are also many interval names that have the same pitch distance. All those are called enharmonic intervals. For example, augmented fifth and minor sixth are enharmonic intervals. These are useful in some cases, while in others might be misleading when learning music theory. You have talked a lot about pitches, but what about rhythm? How do you measure time distances? Part 7 all this works with rhythm as well. So in staff notation, pitch would be some kind of y-axis and rhythm would represent the x-axis. There are two key concepts in this x-axis, pulse and rhythmic figure. Rhythmic figures do not represent specific time length in seconds, but depend on the definition of pulse or beat, which is a uniform division of time in a measure. Now, how many pulses or beats are in a single measure? That's what the concept of time signature is for. In one word, figures always indicate an amount of pulse fraction, and the pulse itself is an amount of seconds fraction, because measuring is always about comparing different things in a kind of objective way, right? You may analyze time intervals horizontally or vertically in the same way as with pitch intervals, because they are closely related to each other, and I mean, really close. If you have these two simultaneous figures, you got the same ratio as the octave pitch interval. If you have these two simultaneous figures, you got the same ratio as the pure perfect fifth pitch interval. But is it possible to have two simultaneous figures forming a tempered ratio? Historically, Western music tradition has changed from using pure intervals to tempered intervals, but in time intervals it's not possible, right? If you translate a tempered triton to a polyrhythm, then will you be able to match both starting note attacks in any umpteenth pulse? So after all, pure intervals rules. Now with this example you will understand how pitch intervals relate to rhythmic intervals and how the overtone series works. Check this out. The first five harmonic ratios of the overtone series form this ratio among its fundamental frequencies. 1 over 2 over 3 over 4 over 5. What if you translate this into rhythmic figures with a pulse of 1 beat per minute? You get this. Now let's blow our mind changing the VPM value to a ridiculous high speed of 6600 beats per minute, then it sounds this nice chord. But this chord with these inner harmonic intervals is nowhere to be found on a tempered instrument, right? Well, if we want to be accurate, there are some harmonic pitch intervals that do not match. But why should I care about those tiny differences? I'm fine with this. Then why would somebody study architecture instead of just playing the game called The Sims?
The big picture of Western music theory lies in the staff notation system, which is a description of pitch during a given time, and to spell those pitches you need note names and accidentals. Music intervals regarding pitches are measured by the ratio and beat frequency, and there are some specific names to any combination of note names and half steps. And regarding time intervals in music, you need to understand these following four concepts time signature, tempo mark, pulse, and rhythm figure. If you like this video and want to watch more content related to these topics, then give it a like, subscribe, leave your comments below, and see you soon.